Okay, Roy. All right, everyone. Welcome to Evening Prayer. Father Bob Corley here. As you can hear, the mailman just came by, so Mr. Roy Rogers is going crazy right now. Uh, we'll begin our prayers by um, our preparations by looking up our readings. It's found on page 955 of the Book of Common Prayer. We're on uh, Tuesday. Uh, so today we'll be reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 32 through 40. Uh, we also have a reading about our saint for the day, which comes from Lesser Feasts and Fasts, and that's uh, about James de Coven. And our psalm for this evening is Psalm 108. We'll begin the evening office with the opening verse, which is found on page 115 in the Book of Common Prayer. Seek him who made the Pleiades and Orion, and turns deep darkness into the morning, and darkens the day into night, who calls for the waters of the sea and pours them out upon the surface of the earth. The Lord is his name. On page seventy-nine, or page 117, or 116, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, as now, and will be forever. Amen. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun, and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. So our reading from the Psalter, Psalm 108, begins in your prayer book on page 749. We also have Psalm 109 scheduled. My heart is firmly fixed, O God, my heart is fixed. I will sing and make melody. Wake up, my spirit, awake, lute and harp. I myself will waken the dawn. I will confess you among the peoples, O Lord. I will sing praises to you among the nations. For your loving kindness is greater than the heavens, and your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. Exalt yourself above the heavens, O God, and your glory over all the earth, so that those who are dear to you may be delivered. Save with your right hand and answer me. God spoke from his holy place and said, I will exult and parcel out Shechem. I will divide the valley of Succoth. Gilead is mine and Manasseh is mine. Ephraim is my helmet and Judah my scepter. Moab is my washbasin. On Edom I throw down my sandal to claim it. And over Philistia I will shout in triumph. Who will lead me into the strong city? Who will bring me into Edom? Have you not cast us off, O God? You no longer go out, O God, with our armies. Grant us your help against the enemy, for vain is the help of man. With God we will do valiant deeds, and he shall tread our enemies underfoot. Psalm 109. Hold not your tongue, O God of my praise, for the wicked, for the mouth of the wicked, the mouth of the deceitful, deceitful is opened against me. They speak to me with a lying tongue. They encompass me with hateful words, and fight against me without a cause. They despite or despite my love, they accuse me. But as for me, I pray for them. They repay evil for good and hatred for my love. 
Set a wicked man against him, and let an accuser stand at his right hand. When he is judged, let him be found guilty, and let his appeal be in vain. Let his days be few, and let another take his office. Let his children be fatherless, and his wife become a widow. Let his children be waifs and beggars. Let them be driven from the ruins of their homes. Let the creditor seize everything he has. Let strangers plunder his gains. Let there be no one to show him kindness, and none to pity his fatherless children. Let his descendants be destroyed, and his name be blotted out in the next generation. Let the wickedness of his fathers be remembered before the Lord, and his mother's sin not be blotted out. Let their sin be always before the Lord, but let him root out their names from the earth. Because he did not remember to show mercy, but persecuted the poor and needy, and sought to kill the brokenhearted. He loved cursing, let it come upon him. He took no delight in blessing, let it depart from him. He put on cursing like a garment, let it soak into his body like water, and into his bones like oil. Let it be to him like a cloak which he wraps around himself, and like the belt that he wears continually. Let this be the recompense for, from the Lord to my accusers and to those who speak evil against me. But you, O Lord my God, O deal with me according to your name. For your tender mercy's sake, deliver me. For I am poor and needy, and my heart is wounded within me. I have faded away like a shadow when it lengthens. I am shaken off like a locust. My knees are weak through fasting and my flesh is wasted and gaunt. I have become a reproach to them. They see and shake their heads. Help me, O Lord my God. Save me for your mercy's sake. Let them know that this is your, that this is your hand, that you, O Lord, have done it. They may curse, but you will bless. Let those who rise up against me be put to shame, and your servant will rejoice." Let my accusers be clothed with disgrace and wrap themselves in their shame as in a cloak. I will give great thanks to the Lord with my mouth. In the midst of the multitude, I will praise him because he stands at the right hand of the needy to save his life from those who would condemn him. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. So we have a reading from 1 Corinthians. Chapter 7, verses 32 through 40. I oh, thought I had the ribbon. I did not. There we go. I want you to be free from anxieties. The unmarried man is anxious about the affairs of the Lord, how to please the Lord. But the married man is anxious about the affairs of the world, how to please his wife, and his interests are divided. And the unmarried woman is, and the virgin are anxious about the affairs of the Lord, so that they may be holy in body and spirit. But the married woman is anxious about the affairs of the world, how to please her husband. I say this for your own benefit, not to put any restraint upon you, but to promote good order and unhindered devotion to the Lord. If anyone thinks that he is not behaving properly toward his fiancée, if his passions are strong, and so it has to be, let him marry as he wishes. It is no sin. Let them marry. But if someone stands firm in his resolve, being under no necessity, but having his own desire under control, and has determined in his own mind to keep her as his fiancée, he will do well. So then, he who marries his fiancée does well, and he who refrains from marriage will do better. A wife is bound as long as her husband lives, but if the husband died, she is free to marry anyone she wishes, only in the Lord." But in my judgment, she is more blessed if she remains as she is. 
and I think that I too have the Spirit of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll respond with the song of Simeon, which is found on page 120. Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Our next reading is about our saint for the day. This comes from Lesser Feasts and Fast. Uh, James de Coven, who was a priest, died in the year 1879. James de Coven was born in Middletown, Connecticut in 1831, ordained by Bishop Kemper in 1855, and appointed professor of ecclesiastical history at Neshota House. In addition, he administered a preparatory school and assisted at the Church of St. John Chrysostom in Delafield, Wisconsin. Neshota House was associated from the time of its foundation with many of the principles of the Oxford movement, above all in its emphasis on the sacramental life of the church and the expression of devotion to the Holy Eucharist, including such practices as bowing to the altar at the name of Jesus and before receiving communion. In 1859, DeCoven became warden of the church college at Racine, Wisconsin, where he emphasized the life of worship. He died the, there in 1879. De Coven came to national attention at the general conventions of 1871 and 1874, when the controversy over ritualism was at its height. In 1871, he asserted that the use of candles on the altar, incense, and genuflections were lawful because they symbolized the real spiritual presence of Christ, which the Episcopal Church upheld, along with the Orthodox and the Lutherans. He cited a recent decision of an ecclesiastical court of the Church of England, which affirmed as the teaching of the Church of England that the spiritual presence of the body and blood of our Lord in the Holy Communion is objective and real. Because of his advocacy of the ritualist cause, consents were not given to his consecration as Bishop of Wisconsin in 1874 and of Illinois in 1875. To the General Convention of 1874, de Coven expressed the religious conviction that underlay his churchmanship. You may take away from us, if you will, every external ceremony. You may take away altars and super altars, lights and incense and vestments, and we will submit to you. But, gentlemen, to adore Christ's person in his sacrament, that is the inalienable privilege of every Christian and Catholic heart. How we do it, the way we do it, the ceremonies with which we do it are utterly, utterly indifferent. The thing itself is what we plead for. Here ends the reading. We'll continue with the Apostles' Creed, page 120. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory 
forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Our first collect comes from Lesser Feasts and Fast, a collect for James DeCoven. Almighty and everlasting God, the source and perfection of all virtues, you inspired your servant, James DeCoven, to do what is right and to preach what is true. Grant that all ministers and stewards of your mysteries may impart to your faithful people, by word and example, the knowledge of your grace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our second colic this evening can be found on page 123, a colic for aid against perils. Be our light in the darkness, O Lord, and in your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And a colic for mission, page 124. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night, and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ, give rest to the weary. Bless the dying, soothe the suffering, pity the afflicted, shield the joyous, and all for your love's sake. Amen. I'll invite your prayers this time. Ask your prayers for those on our parish intercession list. We seek comfort for Aaron, the Bryson family, Lisa, Susan, favor for Andrea and Patrick, grace for Clay, the Thomas family, and Yun, guidance for Casey, peace for Pat, healing for Allison, Archie, Ben, Blewett, Brad, Candy, Christine, Father Damien, David, Deanna, Dee Dee, Dee, Drew, Hun, John, John M, Juliana, Catherine, Kathleen, Mary, Melinda, Michael, Patrick, Red, Rex, Sam, Sherilyn, Susan, Terry, and Zora. Protection for Annalise, Billy, Emma, Lewis, Michael, the people of Ukraine. Strength for John, June, Steffi and Amanda, the Thomas family, and may Susan rest in peace. The general thanksgiving can be found on page 125. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace, and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Well, I really appreciate all that have joined for evening prayer. Um, greetings to those that I can see here on Facebook as part of our live stream. So good evening to Sylvia and Julie, Marjorie, Mom and Dad, and Doris. God bless you all. Hope you have a great night. 
Uh, we'll be back tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. with morning prayer. Good night.